Hello, everyone. Last week, I talked about adding more objects to our portfolio of gifts that we can put together for a client. And I talked about doing like a, a little 3D hand. Well, there's a couple of ways we can do that that aren't as difficult as modeling something in three dimensions. So if you're doing a three-dimensional object, you've got to go all the way around it. But there's some things that we can do that allow us to not have to use photogrammetry to create an object. And the first thing I want to talk about is just taking a photograph. If you put a photograph through a slicing program, which is going to render it correctly for a 3D printer to print, there's two ways you can do it. You can make the lighter closer to you or the darker closer to you. Now, what that does is it means that if it's lighter closer to you, that will be thicker material, right? Because it's going to do more layers of that. It's trying to bring that up towards you. It's like a, a bar relief. If you do it that way, then you have a couple of options that we will get to. But there's another way you can do it. If you flip that and make the darker closer, again, what did I say? More material. When you look at it, it's not going to look like much. However, if you backlight it, it looks like the original object, right? Because that thicker material makes it darker. So it reverses that light and dark with the backlight coming through it, giving you a image that you could then put in something like a lamp. I don't know if you guys have seen the LED cube lamps, for example, but if you had one side of that that allowed you to slide in or was printed with it, that image that you created from your photograph, that would mean that your that light, when turned on, would look like the person, right? How cool would that be for a mom, for example, to have a picture of her baby as a, a light in her room, which could be a night light. You know, it doesn't have to be a very bright light. It can just be a little light that she can turn on at night and see her baby, right? The easiest way to do that from a technical standpoint is to have a lamp that you can slide in or attach to your image that you've created in 3D. The other thing you could do with it, of course, is it could sit in a window, right? Light's coming through the window. It's going to backlight that thing. It's going to look great. And all you have to do there is just attach it to some suction cups and stick it to the window. The more complicated method would be to render it as a bas relief in 3D and create the lamp around it. And the reason I say that's more difficult to do is because you have to, the first one just takes a slicing program and you just drop it in there and it goes. If you're trying to do it the other way, what that's going to mean is that you're going to have to do a little bit more work getting that first three-dimensional object done before you can hook it to your cube. Now, there are other ways that we can do this, and there's other things that we can do, and we'll, we'll, they'll get a little harder as we go and a little more expensive as we go. The other thing that we can do is hue painting, basically. It is a process by which the three-dimensional object gets turned into a photograph by layering over different colors. Now, as you can imagine, if you've got a single color 3D printer, you're going to have to stand there and swap out the individual colors. Having something that has more colors that feed into it, like a four color, would give you a little bit more flexibility, right? You could use the uh, red, green, blue or cyan, magenta, and red, are uh, the cyan and magentas, and yellow, for 
with a white material to paint the color. And what that does is it puts a layer of, let's say you wanted to have green, right? It's going to want to put um, a couple of colors together to get that color. And if you remember when you were back using crayons and you put one color over the other, you would get a different color. So by taking those four colors, the four basic colors, right? Red, green, and blue. RGB that we're used to for everything. You can then combine those colors to create other colors. Because this is 3D printing, you're going to print with one filament and then put another filament over it. And there are programs out there that will handle that calculation for you, right? You put the image in, you make adjustments to the image the way you want it to look, and then it tells you when things are going to have to change and at what layers they're going to change at. Again, having a multiple uh, filament printer is more expensive than a single one, but you'll be able to do more with that multiple filament. Again, this is something that you could hand out to an outside firm to print for you as well. So keep that in mind. Another thing that you could do that you could also hand out to an outside firm is again, using that uh, 3D print from your slicing, but reversing it so that the light is closer to you, looks more like the person when you're looking at it, not backlit, right? You re you've inverted the image. Just the same thing as if you have it open in Photoshop and you invert your black and white, this is the same process. It looks more like the person because the face is pulled forward. That could then be painted. Now it looks like something to begin with. It looks like the person, whereas the first example that we talked about does not look like the person until it's backlit. This one does. So let's say you have somebody with dark hair. That dark hair is going to be the thinnest layer here. And that'll get painted the color of their hair. And then you paint the rest of the stuff in there. You could do this yourself, or you could have somebody do it for you based off of the picture, right? You give them the picture and you give them the three-dimensional that was based off that print picture and allow them to paint it um, to match. Now, these type of objects, whether it be painting with the hue or painting, um, you know, having it physically painted, could then be put in a frame. They could be made into a uh, tree ornament. They could be used in a lot of different places. The first method, the light method, requires a light to be behind it. So it's a little bit less uh, flexible, let's say, into where it can go. Because you're not just going to hang that on a wall. It needs to have a light behind it. But it can hang on a window. It can be put into a lamp, which gives you something that's more versatile from the perspective of it's just something that could be anywhere in the house, right? That lamp can be there and the person can turn on that lamp and, and see that image at any time. So you've got a couple of different options here of what you can create um, and what you can use from a 3D um, object to create something very unique for your client. And you could even hook your logo in as part of the backing of whatever it is that you created for them. So that not only have you given them something very cool, you've also created something that will remind them of you in your service. So that anytime that they need another photographer or they want some new object, they'll come looking for you. So again, this is about expanding our portfolio of items that we can sell to a client that's going to be meaningful to the client. And that's what I got for you guys this week. And I will talk to you all next week.